On the evening of October 22, 2020, in the peaceful city of Auburn, Alabama, a Chinese couple was tragically killed in their own home by their previous tenant. This shocking incident deeply affected the Chinese community in the United States. Initially, people condemned the brutal actions of the perpetrator, but as more details emerged from those who knew the couple, many individuals began to reevaluate their views on the situation. Welcome to Red Eastern True Crime. If you like true crime stories, please subscribe to my channel. Let's dive into this story. At 7.15 p.m. on October 22, 2020, a man in Auburn, Alabama called 911 and confessed, I killed people. I killed a family. Not by accident. I killed them myself. I wanted to kill them. Police and paramedics immediately responded to the home at 700 Monroe Avenue, where the incident took place. When they arrived, they found a young man sitting on the front lawn in a state of shock, covered in blood. He did not resist when officers approached. Inside the house, police discovered bloodstains in the living room and kitchen on the first floor. They quickly located two seriously injured victims, a man and a woman, and took them to the hospital for treatment. After a thorough search of the house, they found two frightened children hiding in a corner. One child was eight years old and the other was five years old, fortunately physically unharmed. The arrested man, identified as Wang Zhuobin, a 21-year-old from China's Hunan province, was quickly taken to the police station. Wang had been a student at Auburn University since 2018. The male victim was pronounced dead upon arrival at the hospital that night. The female victim, who initially survived the attack, later died in March 2021 due to her serious condition. We have an update tonight out of East Alabama. A man uh, accused of murder in 2020 facing a judge in Lee County earlier today. Auburn police say Zubin Wang broke into a home, stabbed a man and woman on Monroe Drive in Auburn back in 2020. He allegedly knew the pair. Well, this afternoon, Newsletter 9 was at a status hearing for Wang and learning the defense and prosecution will discuss and review physical evidence together. Plus, we learned it's most likely the case will not be tried this year because Lee County is working on two other capital murder cases. Wang faces a capital murder charge, and his trial has yet to begin. In Alabama, which has the death penalty, Wang, if convicted, could potentially be the first Chinese citizen in the U.S. to receive such a sentence. The severity of the charge stems from his violent act of breaking into the home and brutally killing the parents in front of their young children. At the police station, a calm Wang recounted the events in fluent English. He explained that he had been a tenant in the house and had several disagreements with the landlord couple. When he moved out, they kept his deposit. On the evening of the incident, he went to confront the landlords. Mrs. Landlord opened the door, and an argument immediately ensued. She then closed the door and called her husband downstairs for help. Wong tried to enter through the back door but was met by Mr. Landlord, who pushed him out. Wang refused to leave and pulled a knife from his backpack and stabbed Mr. Landlord in a fit of rage. Mrs. Landlord screamed in fear and tried to intervene. The two children heard the commotion and witnessed the horrific scene. When Mrs. Landlord realized she couldn't stop Wang, she yelled at the children to run and hide. After unleashing his extreme anger, Wang staggered out of the house, dropped the knife, and sat trembling on the lawn. He grabbed his cell phone and dialed 911. The autopsy revealed that Mr. Landlord had 23 stab wounds all over his body, some of which reached vital organs such as the heart and lungs, causing fatal injuries. Mrs. Landlord had more than 60 wounds, the most serious of which were in her chest, specifically puncturing her lungs. Although she survived briefly, she later died of complications from her lung injuries. Although Mrs. Landlord had more wounds, they were not as deep as Mr. Landlord's. This is because Mr. Landlord was caught off guard, and Wang used more force on him. Mrs. Landlord's wounds were mostly from trying to defend herself. What kind of intense hatred made Wang, a seemingly kind and honest young man, commit such a brutal crime in front of two young children, inflicting more than 80 stab wounds? Official reports did not specify the reason for Wang's violence. However, 
Insiders and online users uncovered a post by Wang accusing Mrs. Landlord, her responses, and chat records from related WeChat groups. These conversations revealed that their conflicts were mainly over rental issues. Wang Zhuobin, who was born in China's Hunan province in 1999, came to Auburn University in 2018 at the age of 19 after graduating from high school. Located in Lee County, Alabama, Auburn is the largest city in eastern Alabama. It is a historic college town and home to Auburn University, where many Chinese students and faculty members live. Mr. Landlord, also known as Xuan Lijun, was 40 years old at the time of the incident. He received his master's and doctoral degrees from Beijing University in China and later conducted postdoctoral research at Auburn University's School of Aerospace Engineering. He was an expert in computational fluid dynamics in the field of aerospace engineering. His wife, Wu Zhengzheng, was 41 years old, and they had two children. In early April 2020, Wang, a sophomore, was nearing the end of his lease in the house and was looking for a new place closer to his school. Through a recommendation, he got in touch with Mrs. Wu, the landlord, who offered him a bedroom on the second floor of her house to rent. Wang was busy preparing for exams and didn't see the house in person, but he decided to move in around the beginning of May, after looking at the photos of the room on WeChat. As the pandemic situation in the U.S. escalated, Mrs. Landlord sent a message to Wang on April 23rd, allowing him to move in May, but requesting that he quarantine himself in his room for two weeks. Despite Wang's belief that he didn't need to quarantine, because he hadn't traveled outside the U.S. since 2018, Mrs. Landlord insisted on her children's safety and offered to cook for Wang during this time. Understanding Mrs. Landlord's concern and the difficulty of finding another place to live quickly, Wang agreed. He asked, Can I go downstairs or take a walk outside? Mrs. Landlord replied, Please try to stay in your room for the first two weeks, because if you were quarantined in China, you wouldn't even be allowed to go into the hallway. If you really want to go out for a walk, you can go to the backyard. After two weeks, you can go anywhere you want. Okay? If you go to the backyard, can you please wear a mask? Throughout the conversation, Mrs. Landlord communicated with Wang in a cooperative and consultative manner, and Wang responded in a calm and understanding manner. More than a week later, Wang moved into Xuan and Wu's house. On his first day, Wang found that the air conditioner in his room was not working, and the room temperature was 88 degrees Fahrenheit, or 31 degrees Celsius. He wanted Mr. Landlord to teach him how to use the air conditioner, but Mrs. Landlord told her husband not to bother teaching Wang because he didn't need it. The next day, Mr. Landlord still helped Wang with the air conditioner. Later, Mrs. Landlord noticed that Wang had an open window and suggested that he keep it closed since the air conditioner was running. Just one day after moving in, Wang faced an unpleasant situation. On the 10th day of his quarantine, his bed broke while he was sleeping. Mrs. Landlord blamed Wang and demanded $700 for the bed frame and mattress. Wang inspected the bed and found that most of the wooden slats holding it together were loose. He argued that as a person who weighs 84 kilograms, the bed couldn't have broken after only 10 days of normal use. He also questioned why he should pay for a new mattress when the mattress was still good. And later he saw similar bed frames on Amazon for only $114. Mrs. Landlord claimed that the room Wang was staying in had never been used before, so the bed should be fine as she had prepared it for her son after renovating it. However, discussions on a local Chinese student WeChat group revealed that many had rented the room before and slept on the same bed. It appeared that Mrs. Landlord was trying to scam Wang and extort money. Eventually, Mr. Landlord intervened and suggested that if the bed could be fixed, they would let the matter go. Otherwise, Wang would only compensate $100. After completing his two-week quarantine, on the 15th day, Wang went out for a walk wearing his mask. When he returned, Mrs. Landlord advised him to walk toward the woods below instead of the road, because the neighbors might be frightened to see him wearing a mask. Wang found Mrs. Landlord to be overly controlling and inconsistent, 
especially since she had previously told him he could go wherever he wanted after the quarantine. Over the next few days, when Wang was cooking, Mrs. Landlord stood behind him and mentioned that she only cooked one meal a day because of the high cost of utilities. When Wang was doing laundry, Mrs. Landlord watched the time and warned him not to go over the dryer limit or pay her $20. She also asked Wang not to wear sandals in the house to avoid damaging her hardwood floors. Wang felt that he was constantly under Mrs. Landlord's watchful eye in everything he did. Despite her strictness, Mrs. Landlord claimed that she often did good deeds and helped Chinese students without expecting anything in return. She lectured Wang on responsibility, mentioning that he had moved in without even a mask, which she saw as a lack of conscience and morality toward his parents. One day in the backyard, the landlord's children shouted virus at Wang, saying that their mother had told them to stay away from him because he was an outsider. As Wang became increasingly unhappy living in the house, tensions with Mrs. Landlord escalated. He felt that she was being too petty and morally manipulative, so he decided to move out. After a few days of looking for a new place to live, Wang informed Mrs. Landlord of his decision to move out. At that time, Wang had lived in Mrs. Landlord's house for only one month. Mrs. Landlord said, Oh, okay, but you have to pay the penalty fee. During Wang's quarantine in the house, Mrs. Landlord made him sign a lease. Although Wang briefly reviewed it and found many clauses unfair to tenants, he signed without foreseeing any problems. The contract stipulated that if a tenant broke the lease and moved out early, he would have to pay the landlord 12 months rent, a total of $7,200, as a penalty. Wang was shocked when Mrs. Landlord demanded such a ridiculous amount as compensation. Knowing that the standard penalty for breaking a lease in the U.S. is a maximum of three months' rent, he firmly refused. This led to a heated argument between them. Mrs. Landlord then bragged about her legal background, claiming that she had studied law in Hong Kong and was licensed to practice law. She threatened to send Wang a legal letter if he didn't comply. In arguments, some Chinese people like to threaten with statements like, I will sue you, or I will send you a legal letter. It's a tactic to intimidate those who are inexperienced or fearful of escalating the situation. Mrs. Landlord continued, boasting of her legal connections and claiming that she could win a case against Wang not only in U.S. courts, but also in China, and make him pay. Undeterred, Wang stood his ground and said, Then I'll get a lawyer myself. We'll see what the court decides. What surprised Wang was that Mrs. Landlord contacted his parents in China. It was like a teacher reporting a student's misbehavior to the parents. She accused Wang of not paying rent, refusing to pay compensation, and not wearing a mask during quarantine, claiming that this endangered her family's health. Without knowing the full story, Wang's parents scolded him, which led to an argument because he felt misunderstood by them. Angry that Mrs. Landlord had involved his parents in this way, Wang confronted her in another heated argument. Then, Mr. Landlord intervened and told Wang that he didn't have to pay the $7,200. Finally, Mrs. Landlord refused to return the two-month security deposit that Wang had paid when he moved in. Feeling upset, Wang moved out. If it had ended there, it would have been just another unfortunate landlord-tenant situation. However, the arrival of a person changed the course of events. In August 2020, a woman named Mrs. H approached Wang. She introduced herself as the wife of a Chinese professor at Auburn University. After hearing about Wang's situation with Mrs. Landlord Wu, she sympathized with him and suggested that he share his story online. Mrs. H felt it was important to expose the landlord's misconduct to warn other Chinese students and protect them from being tricked. At Mrs. H's suggestion, Wang wrote about his experience with Mrs. Landlord and posted it on a Baidu forum. He also included many screenshots of WeChat conversations as evidence. The post quickly gained attention, and more than a dozen Chinese students from Auburn University came forward to share their own stories and expose Mrs. Landlord's unethical actions for money. Soon after, Mrs. H added Wang to a 500-member WeChat group of Chinese people living in Auburn. Many in the group had allegedly been scammed by Mrs. Landlord. 
For example, one person said he used Mrs. Landlord's airport pickup service. They had agreed on a price of $120, but when they met, Mrs. Landlord insisted on an extra $80 because he had too much luggage or she wouldn't give him a ride. Another person shared how Mrs. Landlord accused him of damaging her hardwood floor with his sandals and kicked him out during a rainstorm, demanding $2,000 for damages before he could take his belongings. Furthermore, someone shared an incident where his parked car was hit by Mrs. Landlord. Instead of taking responsibility, Mrs. Landlord insisted that the tenant pay for the damage, citing improper parking as the cause of the collision. In addition, the tenants were limited to using the dryer twice a month, with a $20 fee for each additional use. They also mentioned that when things got really bad, Mrs. Landlord would claim to have a legal background and a license to practice law. She would threaten to send them a legal letter and intimidate them, saying that it wouldn't be good for them in the long run to get involved in legal matters right after arriving in the U.S. Her last resort was to call the tenant's parents in China to complain and express concern about their children's behavior. The tenant's parents knew that Mr. Landlord was a postdoctoral fellow at Auburn University and that Mrs. Landlord had gone to law school. Because of her status, many parents naturally respected Mrs. Landlord and believed what she said. Without fully understanding the situation, some parents blindly sent money to their children to pay Mrs. Landlord or advised their children to be more compliant. Mrs. Landlord's tactics were particularly successful with new Chinese student tenants in the U.S. The details provided are extensive, but confirming their accuracy has proven difficult. After hearing about the incident, Mrs. Landlord took to her WeChat moments to share her side of the story. She mentioned that she provided Wang with a fan when he moved in because her house had central air conditioning. Opening Wang's room would disrupt the airflow and affect the air in the entire house. She also clarified that she never asked Wang to reimburse her for the $700 cost of a new bed and mattress, which Wang offered to pay for. Soon after, Mrs. H shared what she claimed was Mr. Landlord's salary statement from Auburn University on the WeChat group. The implication was that Mrs. Landlord's questionable actions were due to her husband's low income. This news spread throughout the Chinese community at Auburn negatively impacting Mrs. Landlord's reputation and business. Mrs. Landlord also used her WeChat group to clear the air, saying that Wang had been used by Mrs. H. She accused Mrs. H of having malicious intentions and running a business like hers, using negative competition and public opinion to undermine her. Mrs. Landlord alleged that Mrs. H, who was originally a mistress, had broken up a family and climbed the corporate ladder by getting pregnant without much education, often flaunting her wealth online. Mrs. Landlord listed various questionable behaviors of Mrs. H, such as using her professor husband to get students to work as drivers or handymen. Mrs. H would even use students' membership cards to shop and exploit Chinese students. If the students resisted, she would threaten them by claiming that her husband could prevent them from graduating. The conflicting stories led to intense arguments with Mrs. H later exposing Mrs. Landlord's abusive WeChat messages and dragging her young daughter into the conflict. Soon after, Mrs. H sued Mrs. Landlord for defamation, citing allegations that she was a mistress and a homewrecker. Throughout the ordeal, Mr. Landlord made several attempts to settle the matter peacefully, but his wife remained adamant. In October 2020, the defamation case filed by Mrs. H against Mrs. Landlord was heard in a civil court in Auburn. Wang, who had moved out of Mrs. Landlord's apartment more than four months earlier, attended the trial as a witness for Mrs. H. The court later ruled in favor of Mrs. Landlord, much to her satisfaction. That evening, she took to the internet to demand that Wang retract his earlier post against her and issue a public apology, threatening legal action if he did not comply. Within less than 48 hours, however, the situation took an unexpected turn for Mrs. and Mr. Landlord. On the evening of October 22nd, a tragic incident occurred. While Wang was cooking at home, he became very angry and grabbed a knife and went to Mrs. Landlord's house. The exact cause of his extreme and cruel actions remains unknown, 
driving him to commit such a violent act, risking his freedom and even his life. The incident shocked the local Chinese community, prompting Mrs. H to quickly disband the WeChat group she had created and remove her online presence from public view. People familiar with the situation pieced together the events to provide clarity on what happened. Almost everyone who knew Wang expressed disbelief that he could become a murderer. They remembered him as a kind, easygoing young man who rarely argued or showed aggression. Mr. Landlord was well-respected and had a good reputation. It's said that he had been a devout Buddhist for many years and was known for his humility and willingness to help others. Both teachers and classmates at the school regarded him as a perfect gentleman. Wang had also posted praise for Mr. Landlord, saying he was a good teacher whom he fully respected. However, during the violent incident, Wang immediately targeted Mr. Landlord. In such an extreme manner, he chose to vent his anger at the expense of another's life, leaving two young children to witness the tragedy of their parents' murder, causing them a lifetime of trauma. According to news reports, the court awarded custody of the two children, not to their grandparents, but to an adoptive family in the U.S. It is hoped that they will find love and care in their new home, giving them a chance for a fresh start in life. Although Mrs. Landlord had a negative reputation in the Chinese community, some of her American neighbors knew her as a kind and polite person who spoke softly. The Landlord family lived away from the Chinese neighborhood to assimilate into American society. Mrs. Landlord ran a personal shopping business, sold American goods to China, offered airport pickup services, and rented out spare rooms in her home to support her family. She was a protective mother and a strong-willed wife who liked to be in charge. While some felt sorry for the landlords, others accused Mrs. Landlord of cheating tenants out of money and believed she got what she deserved. Mr. Landlord, aware of his wife's excessive behavior, failed to intervene and instead chose to turn a blind eye, resulting in unfair treatment for many student tenants and tragic consequences. In the Chinese community in the United States, many Chinese landlords rent out one or more bedrooms in their own homes. Because of the difficulty in measuring individual utility usage, the rent is often a fixed rate that includes utilities. This arrangement leads some landlords to closely monitor tenants' water and electricity usage with some imposing restrictions, such as no electric heaters in the winter, limited showers, or no overnight guests. Mrs. Landlord, who came to the U.S. a few years before Wang, looks down on the newly arrived Chinese students. Although she feels superior to them, she only rents rooms to Chinese students because it is easier to communicate and control the situation. She wanted to distance her family from the discrimination against the so-called Chinese virus in America, but she told her children that Wang was the virus. She understood that Chinese students from normal families are raised with strict control, fearing consequences such as not graduating or receiving money from their parents, which could lead to job rejection due to a legal record. In Chinese universities, some professors and their families treat students like servants, forcing them to run errands such as delivering packages, buying breakfast, shopping, driving them and their families, accompanying and tutoring their children, and helping with moving and cleaning. They threaten students with not graduating if they refuse, and they have the power to make it happen. If you're interested in this aspect of Chinese universities, leave a comment and I may make a video about it. An online screenshot shows messages between Wang's parents and Mrs. Landlord, in which they show great respect for her. They apologize for Wang's behavior, explaining that he is young, hot-tempered, and may have unintentionally offended Mrs. Landlord. They promise to educate Wang and hope for her forgiveness. Some Chinese parents often trust authority figures, such as teachers, without fully understanding their child's actions, which leads to quick blame. If Wang's allegations against Mrs. Landlord are true, then she is exploiting the mindset of Chinese students and their parents for her own benefit. Though known as a good kid, student, and friend, Wang resorts to extreme measures in conflicts, seeing destruction as the only solution. He lacks emotional control. Perhaps his loneliness in a foreign country 
academic pressure, and parental misunderstanding have fueled his anger toward the landlord. I will provide an update when there is new information about this case. What do you think about this case? Please share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more crime stories, please like and subscribe to my channel.